In this lecture, we'll introduce the first law for a control volume. In the previous lectures, we have stated the first law of thermodynamics for a control mass or a closed system. However, most of the engineering systems such as turbines, compressors and heat exchangers allow mass transfer through them or through the system boundary. So if you have a system and it allows mass transfer through the system boundaries, then we call that system as an open system and therefore we'll have to use a more general approach based on the control volume to apply the principle of the conservation of energy and that is the first law of thermodynamics. Therefore, in this lecture, we'll start with the mathematical formulation of the first law for a control mass. And we already know that the first law for the control mass can be mathematically formulated as the change in energy of the system of a closed system is equal to the work done on the system and the heat transferred to the system. So we'll see that starting with this mathematical formulation of the first law for the control mass, we'll derive the equations for the first law applied to a control volume. Note that the first law for the control mass or the control volume is essentially the same principle of conservation of energy, but the mathematical formulation is different. So essentially, if we have an open system or a control volume, we can also apply this equation for the first law for the control mass to a control volume by carefully choosing the control mass. And we'll show that through an example, but we'll have to apply that a same procedure again and again and therefore it is more convenient to derive a new set of uh, equations that, that correspond to the mathematical formulation for the first law applied to a control volume. So let's first see how we can apply the first law applied to a control mass to an open system. And this example will motivate you on why we need to derive separate set of equations for mathematically formulating the first law for an open system or a control volume. So to do so, let's consider an example of a throttling process. And so we've already come across this throttling process while uh, going over the vapor compression refrigerator during the introduction to the thermodynamics. So what this throttling process is, essentially you have let's say flow of a gas and this gas flows through you can say a capillary or a porous plug. The idea is that this capillary or porous plug it provides resistance to the flow of gas so that there is an appreciable pressure drop across this throttling capillary or the porous plug. So let's say this is state 1 and this is state 2. The state of gas at the inlet is denoted by 1 and the state of gas at outlet if it is denoted by 2 then this uh, capillary will cause the pressure at the outlet to be substantially lower than the pressure at the inlet. Now we want to relate the state of the gas at inlet and the outlet and in particular we are interested in let's say the steady state operation of this particular device. By steady state what we mean is that if we look at any thermodynamic property anywhere so the thermodynamic properties may vary for example pressure 
at the inlet is different from pressure at the outlet. So they may vary in space, but if you look at thermodynamic property at a particular location, then it is independent of time. And this would happen when the rate of mass transfer and energy transfer to the system are constant. So in this device, if you consider a control volume, let's say this, then there is mass transfer in and out of this system and there could in general be energy transfer in terms of heat and work. But if in a system the mass transfer rate and the rate of energy transfer in terms of heat and work are constant then we say that the system is in steady state. So in this lecture, we'll just look at the steady state operation of these open systems. Now, if you consider this system enclosed in this dashed line over here, then clearly there's mass transfer across the system boundaries. Therefore, this system is a control volume and its boundary we can call as control surface. But as of now, we know the first law applied to a control mass only. Therefore, if we want to apply this equation to such an open system, we need to consider a control mass and we want to track that control mass as it flows through this uh, open system. So what we can do is, so let's consider that we have this device and we will track control mass let's say enclosed in this dotted line and this is my control mass that means there is no mass transfer across the system boundary and this can happen if we let's say consider some virtual pistons in reality there are no such pistons but you may consider that this volume or the gas is enclosed between two let's say virtual pistons why do we want these pistons because we are now tracking a control mass and while the control mass flows through this capillary or the porous plug then no mass transfer takes place to this control mass that means we are tracking a substance of a fixed identity as it flows through this system. So let's say that initially this was the piston position. So this piston 2 was touching the right end of this porous plug and here we had let's say volume V1 and the pressure is P1. Then let's consider a second state of this control mass. So this is our porous plug and over time what will happen is that this piston will move towards the right. That means the gas is flowing through the porous plug and it is exiting. So this piston we can think of as moving towards the right and it displaces this piston that is piston number two. So the second state we can consider is that now piston 1 is touching this porous plug and piston 2 has moved to the right and we can say that this is volume V2 and the state can be defined by this volume and pressure which is P2 and this pressure is same as the outlet pressure or the exit pressure in this open system. So again the idea is that 
although a system is an open system we track a mass of substance of a fixed identity enclosed in this red dash line and as that mass of fixed identity flows through this uh, device so at a later time you can say that it is at this particular location now even though a system is an open system we have found a control mass and we are tracking a control mass as it flows through this open system and now we can apply the first law for a control mass so to do so we say that delta u is q plus w let's for the moment say that the walls of this device are insulated and therefore q is equal to zero now let's see what is the work done in this process so in this case we have two pistons that are moving so this is let's say our state a and this is our state b so as we go from state a to state b what is the work done on the system so the work done is due to the motion of these pistons so let's calculate the work done on this system to make a transformation of this control mass from state a to state b so we have on the left piston over here we have the pressure is p1 the initial volume was v1 but at state b the volume on the left hand side is zero so we have zero minus v1 similarly the work done due to motion of the piston on the right hand side is we have pressure p2 the initial volume was zero because this piston was touching the right side of this porous plug and the final volume is v2 and the exit pressure remains the same for this steady state operation of the device therefore we have pressure is p2 therefore the work done on this system is p1 v1 minus p2 v2 and this is the work done on the system to take this control mass from state a to state b now let's look at the change in internal energy so to calculate internal energy there are two components or two sub uh, parts of this system one is this volume of the gas that is between this porous plug and this piston or this plug and the piston on the right hand side and there would be some gas that is within this porous plug now when we look at the change in internal energy we note that we have a steady state so whatever contribution of the substance we have in this porous plug that contribution of internal energy will cancel out and here we have neglected the effects of kinetic energy and the potential energy so the change in internal energy is simply given by the internal energy of the gas in this volume v2 and the internal energy of the gas in this particular volume v1 the difference between those two so that is my u2 minus u1 and when we apply the first law the heat transferred to the system is zero so we have u2 minus u1 is p1 v1 minus p2 v2 in other words this implies that u2 plus p2 v2 is equal to u1 plus p1 v1 we already know that this quantity u plus pv and on the left and the right hand side is the enthalpy so we can simply say h2 is equal to h1 
or alternatively we can write in terms of the specific enthalpies because we have a gas of fixed mass so we have the specific enthalpy at the inlet 1 and outlet 2 is equal so this is what we get so although we had an open system in which the gas can flow through the system boundaries we have tracked a control mass as it flows through this open system or the throttling device in this case and we have been able to relate the enthalpy at the exit with enthalpy at the inlet of this device so in this way even though we have a control volume system or an open system if we are able to track a control mass as it flows through this device we can still apply the first law for a control mass to such open systems in this particular example application of the first law to this throttling device gives us an interesting relation between the inlet and the exit conditions and that is the enthalpy of the gas as it flows through this device does not change so such a process is called an isenthalpic process and note that there was no external heat transfer to this system and again we see that enthalpy comes into picture so this is a second example where we see that enthalpy comes into the thermodynamic analysis and uh, you'll see that enthalpy will come into our thermodynamic analysis throughout our discussion of these open systems or control volume system so this is the simplest example where we can show that how to apply the first law for a control mass to an open system let's look at another example where there is heat transfer and work done on the open system so let's consider an example of a compressor and again we'll consider the steady state operation of this compressor so in this case what we have we have a compressor and this is let's say our control volume so there is mass transfer through the inlet to this compressor and there is mass transfer through the exit so we can denote let's say inlet with subscript i and exit with subscript e and there is work done on this control volume and in fact uh, the rate at which work is done we will denote by the uh, time rate that is w dot and there is heat transfer to the system and this uh, compressor is running continuously so we will talk in terms of the rate of heat transfer and the rate of work that is done on this compressor now in this case let's say we know the inlet conditions and we know the heat that is transferred and the work that is transferred to this control volume then let's say we want to know the exit conditions clearly this is an open system but first we want to see whether we can apply the first law for the control mass that is in general delta e is equal to q plus w to such an open system again we'll follow the same approach so let's say this is my compressor on which we do work and we supply heat so let's consider this is the inlet and this is the exit now we'll consider a control mass again what we can do is let's consider that this control mass is enclosed between these virtual pistons essentially this piston you can say is a boundary across which there's no mass transfer that is taking place and we'll consider transformation of this control mass from let's say this state a to another state where this piston 
moves down and the piston at the exit moves away from the control volume boundary. So initially uh, these are the locations of piston at state A. Later on this piston touches the boundary of the control volume. So the piston comes over here. Let's draw in a different color and the piston at the exit moves away from the control surface that is the system boundary of an open system or a control volume. Clearly in this case we can not say that this process is continuous process so we go from state A to state B and let's say that time at state A was T and time at state B was T plus delta T. So at time T we have this state A of the control mass and at time T plus delta T this piston has moved down at the inlet and this piston at the exit has also moved away from the surface of the control volume. Now we can apply the first law and because we are looking at transformation of the system from state A to state B let's call that the heat that is transferred during this process is delta QCV and the work done on the system to operate this compressor is delta W subscript CV. Now the first thing to note is that at steady state there is no change in the thermodynamic properties within the system. Therefore we must have the mass flow rate at the inlet must be equal to the mass flow rate through the exit and let's just call as m dot. So within time delta t this piston is displacing certain volume so the mass contained within this volume is m dot delta t. In other words if we call let's say this volume as v1 then this volume is given by m dot delta t is the mass and the volume is v1 therefore the mass is the density times this volume and within delta t this is the mass flow rate that takes place from the exit therefore this mass of the substance within this volume which we'll call as let's say VE and let's call this as VI at the inlet will be the density at the exit times this volume E. In other words note that the mass within this control mass system remains the same so there are two contributions to this mass one is that that is within this control volume and that's not changing as we transform the system from state A to state B. So the only mass that is changing is within this volume at the inlet and at the outlet because of the motion of these pistons at the inlet and the exit. Therefore we can write this particular equation. Now let's apply the first law for this control mass and to do so we note that we have delta E is equal to Q and in this case the heat that is transferred is delta QCV and the work done on the system again has two components so the first component let's call this is the work done on the system so clearly the work done on the system has contribution due to this WCV because in the case of compressor there is rotation of this shaft so we have let's say 
delta w cv is the work done on the compressor to take this control mass from state a to state b that means at state a at time t to state b at time t plus delta t but as we have seen in the case of the throttling process we also have this work done on the system due to this motion of these pistons therefore due to the motion of these pistons we have the work done is pi that is pressure at the inlet times vi minus p at the exit times the volume at the exit that means volume by which this exit piston is displaced so this is the work done on the system so now we can write delta e is equal to delta qcv plus delta wcv plus so we have ei vi minus ee ve now note that what is this vi and ve we can substitute from this particular equation so vi in terms of what we know about this system is we know the mass flow rate through the system so vi is m dot delta t that is the mass transfer that takes place in time delta t over the density at the inlet section similarly ve is m dot delta t over the density in other words we can write this as m dot delta t times the specific volume at the inlet and the volume ve we can write as m dot delta t times specific volume at the exit so if the inlet and the exit conditions are known we know the density or the specific volume and we know the mass flow rate through the compressor now we can write w as delta wcv plus so we can substitute this relation over here so we have m dot delta t times pi vi minus pe ve note that this quantity that is pressure times the specific volume is also a thermodynamic property and we'll call this as flow work why is this thermodynamic property because it it is a product of two thermodynamic properties pressure and volume and this quantity flow work corresponds to the work done on the system to flow a unit mass of substance into this open system finally now we can write the first law as so we have delta e is equal to delta q cv plus the work done on the control volume for example by rotating the shaft plus this flow work terms those are m dot delta t pi vi corresponding to the inlet minus the flow work corresponding to the exit and what is delta e so to calculate delta e note that again we have the energy within this control volume but this energy remains the same as we transform the system from state a to state b and that's because we are operating in steady state so to calculate the change in energy we need to 
take into account the change in energy due to the displacement of the pistons only that is the change in the volume of this gas outside this control volume that means between the control volumes and the pistons only and the contribution of the total energy within this control volume will cancel out when we look at the difference e2 minus e1 because the energy within the control volume is constant during this process where we take the control mass from state a to state b and that's because we have a steady state so we can say that delta e is equal to energy of and the mass at the exit minus energy at the inlet that is between the control surface and the piston at the exit and the inlet so the mass is m dot delta t within these volumes then the energy e e would be so first we need to take into account the internal energy so we have the specific internal energy at state e then we have the kinetic energy and let's uh, denote this kinetic energy so we cannot use this symbol u because we've used this for the internal energies let's call the speed as let's say capital v and this is the kinetic energy that means v can in general be a vector so this is the dot product of the velocity so don't confuse this v with the volume so this is the kinetic energy per unit mass at the exit and then we have the contribution of the potential energy and that is due to the change in elevation from the inlet to the exit so this term is my ee and then we have the difference and note that we also have this term e c v which will cancel out because the energy within the control volume remains the same in this particular case similarly we have this term for the inlet so this is my e i and we also have e c v and that cancels out so e c v is the energy within the control volume but it remains the same as we take the system from state a to state b so it cancels out so the only change in energy delta e is due to the contributions at the exit and the inlet so we can write delta e as this finally we can substitute this expression for the change in energy of the control mass as we take the system from time t to t plus delta t back into the equation for the first law and then what we can do is this term also has m dot delta t the flow work term we can take it to the left hand side and club it with delta e so what you're going to get eventually is an equation of this form
So this is the final form of equation and one last simplification is that we can divide this equation by delta t. So again we see that internal energy is added with this flow work and recall that this is the definition of enthalpy. Similarly here we have the enthalpy at the inlet. So what we can write is the first law simplifies to m dot times the change in enthalpy between the exit and the inlet then the difference in the kinetic energy and the difference in the potential energy and that is equal to these terms and note that at steady state the heat that is being transferred to the control volume and the work that is being transferred to the control volume are constant the rates are constant so we will replace these terms that is delta QCV by delta T is the rate at which heat is being transferred to the control volume and this term is equal to the rate at which work is being done to the control volume and this work does not include the contribution of the flow work this is the work that let's say in this case of a compressor is done due to rotation of the shaft so this equation over here is the mathematical formulation of the first law applied to an open system or the control volume at steady state and note that to arrive at this equation we have used the first law for the control mass so we tracked a control mass that is a substance of a given identity as it flows through this open system and using the same first law for the control mass we have arrived at this equation for first law for a control volume or an open system we can do this every time we have to do thermodynamic analysis of an open system however rather than going over such mathematical procedure every time for an open system it would be convenient to derive a general equation for the first law of thermodynamics for an open system and that is what we are going to do in the next lecture so this equation is general but for a steady state operation of an open system with only one exit and one inlet so in next lecture we'll generalize this uh, equation to any type of open system which may not be at steady state